This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Alex. Yeah, it's me. It's Alex Bennett, and it is the Ramble. Uh, a slightly ailing ramble to begin with. Uh, Damien didn't do a show tonight because he got some problems he had to attend to. And um, I almost didn't do a show tonight. Now, why? Because I am sicker than a fucking dog, okay? Uh, I don't know how sick a dog gets, but I, I don't know what I have. But it's, I went to the, well, I'll tell you all about it later. I went to the, um, the clinic today, this little walking clinic we have. <clears throat> And they've got me on a lot of uh, um, steroids to try and get rid of this thing. So we'll see what it what it is. My voice feels a little hoarse, not hoarse, but just labored. And um, uh, it's a rough night for me tonight. But we will do a citizens panel later on. What I decided to do tonight, though, is I'm going to rerun something we ran last week. And that's the interview with my second wife, Ronnie Bennett, who has a very interesting life and a very interesting story to tell. And it became literally one of the most popular programs we've done in recent years, um, uh, gaining a lot of viewers. And I figured I'd rerun it also for another reason. For a week, I've had a problem using the program that puts me on my Facebook page with the video. Now, when, I'm, when I do that, all my followers get a message saying, hey, remember Alex is on. Well, the numbers have been down because I, I've had to do it on another one of my Facebook page. Let me just say this. Today, I finally figured out it's a little trick on how to get that program to work. So now all of you, hi, how are you? I'm glad you found out about this. But what we're going to do is for you people, many of you who didn't even see it in the first place because you didn't get the message that we were going to be doing uh, our little little ramble here. Uh, can see this interview because it's really quite an amazing interview and everybody really enjoyed it. Do you mind if I change my shirt? Okay, I'll go change my shirt. Ladies and gentlemen, staring you straight in the face is wife number two. I guess that's the way to put it, right? Yeah, I think so. How many were have there been? Four or five? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there have been four. <laughs> four. And she's out of sync today if we're showing the picture because we have no reason to know why. She was in sync a while back, then she isn't in sync. It's the great Skype gods, but I wanted you to see her face because this is amazing, you know. Um, she's been going through some very bad health problems. I mean, things you wouldn't want to get, okay? And you look great. You look healthy. You know, it's been... On July 20 is when I had the surgery. And the surgery, you know, um, they opened up my torso from neck to, you know what, and did a lot of stuff inside. And it was hard to go through that recovery. But I'm 95% back. I'm not, it's it's just short of 100%. I can do, I mean, there are rules of how I have to eat now and things like that. But beyond that, I'm no different than I was before. Yeah. Um, and I'm just as surprised as everybody else and grateful. So anyway, this is, uh, this is our 52nd wedding anniversary on September 18th. Right. If, if we had stayed married. Right. We were married for how long? I can't remember now. It was about six years, something like that, seven? About six years, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, sometimes you find that the two people who are married are not meant to be married but then later on in life they find that they were meant to be friends you know and um well, let me tell you something and you started that. out as a friend so why not wind up as one you know well you know what else i think is that when we are younger I've, other people our age have, have agreed with me that when we were younger dating getting married or having trial marriages or whatever they used to call those things is that we all men and women had a long list of requirements in the other person some people want a sense of humor first or I, you know there's a long list this age i don't really have a long list you either like somebody or you don't like somebody and if there's some irritating qualities about them how much do you if you like them enough you can get by with those i don't think we had that uh understanding 
yeah. uh, and tolerance when we were young. Yeah. So, I mean, you're right. Uh, uh, and also when you get older, I find marriage is different when you're older. I mean, I got married for the fourth time at uh, a, a late age, okay, and, and her too. And it just has different dynamics. You know, you you don't have the same, ex you don't expect the same thing out of it. You know, you expect the, the whole different things that you want out of it. Uh, and I think then you, I think early on you kind of marry out of, I don't know, some kind of lust. Well, not even lust many times, but <laughs> just what I would call one of the worst decisions you can possibly make. You know, if you if you made that, you would not have made that same decision, say, at 40 that you made at 30, not the same decision at 30 you would have made at 20. You know what I'm saying? I don't know because I only got married once. I never did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm your one and only husband. I soured yes. I soured you on the whole idea. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, oh man. That's that's terrible. That's terrible. Well, I don't know where to, you know, where to start with you because there's so much that you used to say with me. I don't know where to start with you. Um, I don't know where to start with you because there's so many aspects to your life number one is the current i don't want to call it a predicament it's the current it is a predicament i call it a predicament okay a, the predicament you have you have pancreatic cancer but do, do they say you have pancreatic cancer or now are yes. you don't you have it because they took it out no they took out half my pancreas that had the tumor in it yeah and they took out a whole bunch of uh, lymph glands, 17 or 18, three of which have cancer cells. So a week from now, I start chemotherapy to try to attack those. Wow. Uh, but but so so they still consider you have pancreatic cancer then in that yes. case. Um, yes. And then you go through this, this well, this, what might be grueling or not grueling. You don't know. It's different with everybody. <laughs> or they right? can't tell you. There's a whole long list of side effects you might get. Some people do, some people don't, and nobody can tell you. Wow. Crap shoot. Wow. Geez. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing um, that you, you've gone through this with such... Oh, it, it, you write about it. You, let's tell people you have a... Do you know you're the hardest person I've ever had to interview? I'm usually never at a loss for words when I'm interviewing somebody. Um, uh, uh, you, uh, well, you know, we were married for 52 years, but we knew each other for seven years before yeah. that, so let's call it six. <laughs> but what happened is, is um, you have a, you have a, a blog, uh, uh, and it's called Time Goes By. It's a time book, goes by dot net. Net, okay. Um, and I... Um, uh, I really think that that you've done a marvelous job of explaining what you've been going through if anybody wants to read it there. And it's some of the best writing you've done, I might add, because this is something where you're talking about fear, you're talking about apprehension, you're talking about the process of going through this thing, about coming out the other side of the, of the operation and having to go to the chemo. And you're very open about it. I mean, is this a catharsis for you in a lot of ways? I mean, if you didn't have this blog, would it be a lot harder? Uh, I don't know. What I do know is that the support from readers, from thousands of readers, is overwhelming. And that has helped a lot. And that until this happened to me, I was so healthy for 76 years. Uh, my primary care physician likes to say, Ronnie, you're very healthy, except for the cancer, <laughs> which is a lot like, hey, Mrs. Lincoln, how did you enjoy the play uh, other than that? Exactly. Um, <laughs> but um, I would write, even if I didn't have a blog, I would write a lot of this for myself because I mentioned it in today's post that the writer E.M. Forster said about 100 years ago, how do I know what I think until I see what I say? And I've always used just private personal writing for that. And so in that way, it's helped me. But now I put it out there in the public and get a lot of good reaction. It's really interesting. That's great. That's terrific. Uh, but, you know, it, 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 it is an interesting part of your life because you've had you've led a very interesting life. 
All right. I mean, you feel your 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 life was blessed as you look back on it with just being in a lot of good situations, like being married to me, for instance, which was a no, joy. no. You think that you think that's a joke? That's not a joke. I had a wonderful career, completely unplanned. Didn't plan a bit of it. Just followed one foot after the other. And it started because when you switched from being a music DJ to being a talk show host and where you were working then wouldn't give you a producer and it's damned hard to talk to people on the radio and still run a board and do all the commercials and everything. So I worked with you. Well, the other part of it, the other part of it, and let me say this, the other part of it, her mouth's still going to the people who are watching this because we're behind <laughs> who knows how much. Um, uh, 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 it, it, what happened was is that I it just am lousy at booking guests. I just don't know where to start. I don't have the gall to do it. You know, it takes a lot of chutzpah. And, and you were great at that. And so, you know, I had some of the great people on because you booked them. Well, a huge part of that is when you just started the talk show, don't forget that it was the number one talk show in town. That makes a big difference when especially big name stars, music stars came through town. They don't like to do interviews. And so they would agree with the record company, let's say that they would do only one interview. Well, who are they going to go to? They're going to go to the guy that's got the most audience. That was you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're talking about Houston in this case, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. But uh, other places when yeah, we went to yeah. New York too. Well, yeah. When we went to uh, when we went to uh, <laughs> Chicago, you were out of a job that way because I was just doing a music show and that was right. it. And then we went to 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 New York, uh, and I remember saying to you at one point, um, uh, "Gee, uh, you know, where else could we go? Uh, Chicago's big enough. Where else could we go? New York." And all of a sudden, I get a call, and somebody wants me to, to talk to them in New York. And uh, we pick up, and we go to New York, and you become my producer at WMCA. And then we start having really good guests on that show. You know, <laughs> I was thought you were going to say, and then we started having real problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, that too, but you know. <laughs> but what my point was is that when we broke up, as I, you don't maybe know this, but when people ask me how, how I got into television, I said, well, I'd been producing my former husband's radio show, and when I left him, I couldn't very well show up for work the next day. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go find another job. Yeah. And so I, you know, I produced television shows for a long time. Um, and then I got really lucky. A friend of mine at CBS back in 1995 was made executive producer of CBS TV's first news website, cbs.com, news, cbsnews.com. So I became managing editor and spent the next 10 years on the internet when it was brand new. And the thing about that that I loved so much was that all the years I was in television, I always loved the stagehands in the studios because they had yeah. been there going, a lot of them clear back to the 1940s and 50s when TV was new. And they had all these great stories about the beginning of television. I got to be in on the beginning of the commercial internet yeah. and helped invent it. All the little things of how you see stories presented on the screen. And we didn't even have video yet in those days. And we hardly had even still photos that we could put in the stories. We helped invent that. And we had a great time. Yeah. I had a wonderful career. All kinds of fun things. Kind of. I was in on the invention of the other end of it, the video end of it and the audio end of it. Uh, because we were doing, we were actually with a thing called Play TV, the first daily 12 hour day live um, video program. I remember that. You know, so I mean, uh, you were fascinated by the same thing I was, but you left a chunk out there of your career. <laughs> Uh, maybe, yes. maybe you want to forget it. I don't know. But when you left me, you went to work at uh, the Dick Cavett show. Right. As a lowly production assistant. Right, right. And uh, I didn't think that producing the number one radio talk show in Portland, in New York, was very impressive. No, no, <laughs> I, you, you're going to be an assistant here. Yeah, this is TV, babes. You know, it's not but your I'll stupid But I'll tell you what radio. was important about that. Yeah. If I had taken a little longer to find a job, I could have talked myself into a better television job. But I needed the money. And so I took it. And what happened was it's not that easy to add video to what was essentially a radio talk show, but right. with video. And 
as a lowly assistant, I could ask all the dumb questions yeah. and learn. If I had talked myself into a better job, you would they would just to, see yeah. me as not knowing how to do the job. So it worked out okay. Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, I don't know, how did you get the job with Barbara Walters? Um, a woman that I had worked with at the DeCavett Show had become executive producer of the Barbara Walters specials. And I had been doing, after I left the Dick Cavett show, just some local morning shows like Kathy and Regis New York had about a half a dozen of them back in those days. And I I sometimes feel like I worked every damned one of them. Um, and I got a call from her. I'd taken the summer off just because I was tired of it. And I had just hung up the telephone. This kind of goes with what you, the, the coincidences that happened. I had just hung up the phone from talking with a friend and I had finished by saying, you know, summer's almost over. I'm going to have to go find a job soon. And I picked up the laundry to go take it, drop it off at the laundromat down the street. And the phone rang again. And it was that woman from uh, the Dick Cavett Show who said, Ronnie, I've just become the executive producer at the Barbara Walter Specials, which was only a year old at that time, 1977. And she said, um, I need you to come be a producer here. <laughs> and I started on Monday. Yeah. And you last I mean, things just I got I've been so lucky all my life that things just fell in my lap. And you lasted there for how long? Twelve years? Eleven years. Eleven years. Eleven years. As the associate producer, if you look at any of those old specials, there she is, Ronnie Bennett, associate producer. Uh, and that's mostly that, I, and I, I did, you know, a lot I did all the research for all the guests, which was extensive. I mean, we just practically found every word and every uh, video that was ever shot of any of those guests and I got to travel on ABC's dime all over the country well, that, and all over, all the, over world. the world yeah, yeah it was it was a good job and you met some very amazing the people you met was amazing well I but it was there were amazing people I met on the show on your show when I produced that too yeah but you know. but a little more, uh, I think a little more amazing once you got to Barbara Walters because you were you were dealing pe with people like Henry Kissinger. I think you right. talked about once. Ta ta who who was who was your? It's so hard to remember. I went John Way. I mean, this is back in the set, starting in the late seventies and through the eighties. So a yeah. lot of these people are dead. Oh, and by the way, one of the funny things that happened at our offices is we'd gotten still shots of Barbara. We were gonna, we moved into new offices and wanted to put photographs of her with everybody she'd interviewed on the show on the walls. So somebody got them framed and brought them to me and I was laying them out against on the floor by the walls where I wanted them placed. And the, the production assistant, wonderful guy named Wayne, came to me as he was doing it that day and said, Ronnie, come and look at this. I want to be sure you want it this way. And I came, I said, yeah, and there was John Wayne, and I don't know, I can't remember the other names, but big name, as big a name as John Wayne was back in those days. And he said, Ronnie, you want all of these down here on this wall? He said, have you noticed that they're all dead? Did you mean to do it that way? <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, a lot of people that, I remember doing Dolly Parton, and... Um, Early, early, and that was one of the earliest ones. Um, we, King Hussein of Jordan. Um, we did Sean Connery in the south of Spain at his home there. And I love the south of Spain so much, I had some time, so I spent another two or three weeks there before I came home. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it, it, well, you know, it, it's so hard to go back and remember. Yeah. Um, Is there any one of those people you remember particularly because you liked them? You always remember the ones you didn't like. You know? Okay, name a few you didn't like. <laughs> no, that couple is still alive. I don't want to well, say that. Don't, name the ones who are dead. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I mean, one that was really wonderful that doesn't, it, he's, uh, he is dead. Um, James Garner, uh, mm. who is, you know, a mid level actor, always easygoing kind of guy, not a brilliant actor, but not a terrible actor nicest person in the whole world and the thing he wanted to do we were shooting at his house in los angeles was and it had these gigantic big heavy wooden two doors you know that open like this and he spent a long time ten, all of us anybody he was chatting with while we were doing the setup during the day that i made them rehang these doors again and again and again until you could close them by just pushing them with your finger <laughs> 
<laughs> and that's what he cared most about about his house. Um, and it, I, I wish you, I wish I knew you were going to ask this question because that was then, and this is now, you know. Yeah. And I just forget unless something yeah. comes up. Um, How was John Wayne as a person? Um, nice. Yeah. You know, okay. Um, Ronald Reagan, in his first year in office, we did at his ranch in California. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and you know, we talked about, after we were done with the shoot, we talked about that that he was most comfortable. He didn't like much of the interview at all. He didn't really want to do it, although he was being polite. But whenever there was a break or during setups, he would go talk to the crew, and he would tell Hollywood stories from 20, 30, 40 years ago. And he knew incredible detail about them. But he, And there was a big budget crisis in Washington while he was at the ranch in California. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, he wasn't nearly as engaged talking about government things as he was talking about old Hollywood. Yeah. And we talked about that afterwards and thought that it was the strangest thing how much he was engaged with that, how much he remembered that, how much he wanted to tell stories, but not talk about being president. I mean, being president, wouldn't you want to talk about being president? You know? Yeah, yeah. But he was more interested in Hollywood stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. That's amazing. So you've had this, you had a, you had a really amazing career there. And uh, as what happens with all careers, I can I can attest to it. They start going in a different direction. They start going in less dramatic. And I think a lot of it has to do with age. I, I you know your your specialty is age. Uh, on my blog, yes. On your blog, and and I think and, and I've talked about it many times on my show that uh, aging suddenly makes you puts you into a category where you're discounted. You know, Absolutely, no it's matter, called ageism. No matter and what your ability, and abilities. it's widespread and it's yeah. everywhere. I my last paying job, I was working for a website, at mostly younger people, but that's how websites were. Especially the techies are always much younger. Mm-hmm. And one day, about ten or twelve of us got laid off. My younger colleagues were finding new jobs in six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks. Yeah. In a year, I only could get two interviews. Some They would like me on the telephone, and then I'd show up, and all of a sudden, the job had been filled overnight. Yeah. And until I finally had to, that's why I left New York. I finally had to sell my apartment, because that's where all my money was, and yeah. go somewhere else to live. Right. Um, and that's the people who were laid off, the millions of them who were laid off during the 2008 market crash. Um, most of them, most of them, I don't remember the percentages right now, never again, even in their 40s and 50s, never again worked in their field or never again made as much money as they'd been making when they were fired. And this is, there's, there's as you get older and you begin to look older, there's an invisible line. None of us know where it is or, and it comes at a different age for everybody. But you step across that line and exactly what you said, the whole world on every level discounts you. You, you don't. It, whatever you were any good at before, they don't remember that. They don't care. Um, we become invisible. I mean, women have always talked about how after 50 or so you're invisible to the rest of the world. But men become so too. Maybe maybe you get a few more la- years out of it than we do. But, um, you know, it's it's it doesn't change. I've been ranting on about it for the almost 15, 16, 17 years I've been doing the blog. And it doesn't change. And... Uh, I I consider it a a calling to remind everybody about this. Um, well, you know so something. I'll tell you. While I write about uh, it, but uh, yeah, I'll the t- outside world it doesn't yeah. change much. I'll tell you what happens with me. I mean, like I would love to do a radio show. I would love to, in spite of the fact that I know that radio is a business that hardly exists anymore. Really, uh, I I would love to be on the radio, but I I've given up all hope of that. Because and I haven't gone out for jobs because I know when they look at me, it's like I'm from outer space. I think you once described go walking into somebody at an, at uh, Human Resources or something for a job, and you said the person sitting on the other side of the desk was like 30, and you looked at you like you were a Martian. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, a 30 year old that doesn't know how to deal with an employee that he or she to whom the, the employee reports if they're old and if they look like their mother or these days their grandmother in my case yeah. and um, and they don't know how to deal with that uh, or you, you can't 
it's just that you don't see your mother as an employee. You can't, you know, psychologically you don't deal with that. But um, but it's in all kinds of other areas that uh, are affected by ageism. Old people do not get the best health care because people think that, oh, she's old, oh, he's old. It must be a stroke when it's something, it can be dehydration that's making you sound like you had a stroke. Things yeah. like that happen. Right. But all I'm saying is that when it comes to the job market, forget it, you know. Right. I mean, yes. you know, at 77 years of age, I just don't think anybody will hire me. Now, maybe I'm wrong. But I don't you know, think I, I always am. thought that people in radio were safe because no no matter how much people don't want to hire people because they look old, nobody in the audience knows how old you are. Hey, on listen, radio. You, uh, your voice doesn't sound that much different now than it did uh, years ago, and I don't think my voice is that much different, is it? It is. It's not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you were perfectly in sync. How do you like that? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. You know, you know yeah. it's just uh, I think you're dealing you, you, what you're dealing with on uh, timegoesby.net is valuable, very valuable, and you're the only one I think that's speaking towards that topic in such a uh, such an important way. I mean, you really serve the. I hate to use the word elder or senior or whatever. Movement, no, no, no. There's but. real language you should know about. Senior is old and dusty and nobody likes it okay, anymore. Okay, all right. And it's short for I senior citizen that was always awful. I like elder a lot. And there are such, there are elder law attorneys. And um, there are uh, elder departments at a few of the states in the United States rather than senior departments, you know, for handling those issues. Um, elder is good and I like old. I really, I don't like older because it sounds like you're trying to pretend you're younger than you are. Yeah, my wife says I'm that. I'm an old person. My, Nothing wrong with that. My wife says that. I said, we're getting old. And she says, no, we're getting older. And I go, eh. No, tell her to you know. go with old. I mean, I have to tell you, the first time early, early on, I made the decision that I would refer to old people as old and as elders. And I had... Everybody, you grow up say, learning to speak about old people a certain way, and nobody questions it. But now I was questioning it because I really was, I saw myself becoming an advocate for old people. So the first time I wrote the word old person, it was really hard. <laughs> oh, I'm really going to put that out there on the internet where the whole world might read it. And I did, and every time I needed to use the word old, elder didn't bother me because I think it's a fairly elegant word, but old bothered me. And after about two weeks, you've done it enough times, it's just normal. I, I, and that's why I tell people like your wife, use the word old, use the word elder, because before long, it will be as normal as calling a little kid a little kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it just becomes easy to say once you've done it a few times. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I just, uh, 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 I don't mind being old. I mean, I turned around the other day and looked and said, I'm 77 years old. God, that's old. But the, I don't mind being old. I just mind all the aches and pains that go with it, you know. All, I mean, I've got this little thing wrong and that. I mean, talking to you, I shouldn't even uh, complain about it. But, oh, it, but I, no, you know, I wrote about that the other day because a lot of my readers had said, well, my problem compared to yours isn't a big deal at all. Every problem is a big deal. Every problem. If you're is. facing pain and, every day. And it's, and and it's a crapshoot. Yeah. None of us knows what's going to happen to us. Right. And. And some people, you know, a few people get to the grave without anything big deal happening. Most of us are what you're talking about. The, there's this twinge here. Is it important? Should I look into it or not? Um, or creaky, creaky well, joints. Well, the worst I'm part about it is I'm a, you know, you, you know me, I'm a hypochondriac. So anything, you, you know. You mean you never got over that? No, never, never. It's worse now that I'm older than when I was younger. <laughs> Oh, it, it just, I'm glad it's Marjorie that has to hear it instead of me. Yeah, well, she hates it. She hates it. She, and she's not very nurturing in that. But plus the fact that going to a doctor is her hobby. She has all these doctor's appointments she goes to regularly, you know. I mean, uh, uh, the insurance company's getting a hater. So, you know. But, you know, there's so much to talk to you about and, and right now so little time. I would love to do this more. You know, because what you have to say about aging and what you have to say about uh, just life in general is refreshing. Absolutely refreshing. 
Oh, you're very kind. I just, I mean, one of the things I tried, particularly since this cancer began, um, I wasn't, I, I, I wondered if I was going to write about it at all on the blog, and then I realized it was taking up so much of my brain space that there probably wasn't going to be a blog unless I, I wrote about it. And then I, too, I realized that whether mine is pancreatic cancer, someone else has very bad arthritis, someone else has diabetes they're trying to manage, and so on. Um, it's the nature of old age that you get something, and many old people have several conditions or diseases they're trying to juggle. So my, the subtitle of my blog is what it's really like to get old. And I'd never addressed this problem of all of the medical things we live with because I got lucky. I was so healthy until three months right, ago. Right, right. Uh, so, so it is part of getting old. and. And a lot of my readers, a huge number, are way ahead of me of how hard it is to make the best of, of, the, uh, of the limitations that various things you have give you and still be as healthy and do all the things you want to do as you possibly can every day. So I think that's a, that's a reasonably good topic for a blog about getting old. I think so, too. And I've got to say, I'll tell you this right now. I've done a lot of interviews in my time. You're one of the best. Okay. Well, I couldn't remember anybody who've interviewed, and there were hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 funny. I was talking to somebody about Marcel Marceau the other day, and then I remembered I had interviewed him, and this was a guy who knew Marcel quite well. And uh, he did he his, actually speak? Well, no, what's or funny was it a joke? Is, is in his apartment <laughs> he had a poster for Marcel Marceau at Carnegie Hall, and that was the reason why Marcel Marceau was on my show to plug the Carnegie Hall gig. Uh huh. So life comes around, you know, comes around. Anyway, but did he speak? Oh yeah, of course. I did an interview with him. Oh, well, I remember. I, I, I remember what he I, I, what he said to me that was very flattering. Although I, maybe it's not flattering, I don't know. Is he at, at the, when the interview was over? Would looked at me and said, "Do you know you look like a young Albert Einstein?" <laughs> Except, well, you got to take the hat off because Einstein never wore a cap like that. <laughs> oh, see, now I think you look like what's the name of the guy that does that cable show? Ah. Um, oh. Jeez, this is another part of old age. Um, he, he was a writer, comedy writer, and now he was, he's was he been doing his own show for about the last five or six years. Yeah. Sorry, I, can't make it come to mind. I don't know. Um, anyway. All, you, you, you find that memory, losing memory is another thing? It's fat. It's, the things that don't come to mind are names. And by yeah. the way, as soon as we turn this off, it will come to me. Oh, of course. Um, of course. Also, I often think that when I'm going to the market, let's say, oh, there's only three things I need. I don't need to write them down. I get home with two things not and can't remember what the third was until I need it. Um, and certain facts, numbers, I don't remember well. But other than that, um, I do pretty well. Yeah. You do yeah. great. Hey, listen, can we can we do this again? I know that you're going to be coming up on chemotherapy, and that's not going to be an easy go. <laughs> Can't wait to see what that's but about. But <laughs> once you see how that is, and of course I'll talk to you on the phone about that, uh, maybe you can see your way clear to do more of this, because I really love sure. talking to you. Sure, maybe I'll get better at it. <laughs> it no, you're terrific at it. Ladies and gentlemen, my ex-wife, wife number two, Ronnie Bennett. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. We'll talk This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I'm sorry I cut off the end of that. Uh, boy, my voice is hoarse tonight. Oh, well. That's probably something terrible. I, I have no idea what it is. <coughs> mm. Mm. Sorry for that. There, that cleared it up a little bit. Oh, man, I'm telling you, I have had quite a day, folks. Uh, I, I have quite a weekend, actually. I've had this thing just get worse and worse and worse and worse. And today I said, well, I'll do what I always do. You know, I can call my doctor, and that's a pretty simple thing to do, calling the doctor. The only thing is, I'm sick now. He's going to have an appointment next week or even if I say it's an emergency it'll tomorrow or whatever and I'm sick today right and so I um, I decided that uh, what I would do is uh, I would go to the um, 
to the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the thing called CityMD, you know, one of these walk-in medical places. And on a couple of occasions, they have solved my problem, okay? So I went to it today, and uh, she said, well, I think it's something to do with sinusitis. I think that we need to get some uh, steroids into you and uh, take your Flonase about two times a day, try some Vicks Vapo Rub, you know, put it in a pot and let it boil and inhale the fumes and things like that, and see what happens and take these uh, steroids, which I started taking today, okay? Uh, but I, uh, um, they haven't had a chance to really work yet. She says it'll take a couple of days for them to really do their stuff if it's going to work. And she says, if that doesn't work, here's another prescription. Do not take this, though, if this works. And she said, it's amoxicillin, and it's an antibiotic, and uh, you take it, and you're, you're okay. Now, here I have to blow my nose, but so the people on radio don't have to hear it. There we go. <clears throat> so I've had this thing. I don't know what it is, but, man, I am just a mess. I am just a fucking mess. Uh, before we go any further, uh, I want to tell you about somebody who died. Um, when I was doing w, uh, PLJ in New York, uh, I needed a board op producer, or a produ actually a producer, somebody that produced a show behind the glass, okay? And uh, so I... Um, I went looking for people, and somebody came to me and said, I, would you, I'd like to do it if you would let me, and his name was Randy Ripley, or Randall Ripley. And I, uh, I took a liking to Randy because Randy was a pirate broadcaster. <laughs> and I figured, what a better thing to do than to give this guy employment at ABC who will then pay him a paycheck that will go into helping a pirate radio station. So I hired Randy to be Randall to be my uh, my producer in in studio. Uh, Ronnie was producing the show out of the studio. She was booking the guests and things like that. And um, I really liked uh, I liked him a lot. He was a good guy. Uh, and uh, one thing led to another, and I was no longer there. I don't know what happened to Randall. I think he went somewhere else, and then he went and started a couple of pirate radio stations that he became notorious for. And I cheered him on as I saw that happening. And uh, uh, I, I really, I really uh, liked Randy and R Randall. Anyway, I'll tell you why that changes in a second. <clears throat> so I don't hear from him for, oh, I don't know, years and years and years and years. And then I finally go to Sirius here and I get a call and it says, hi, I'm Randy Steele. You remember me as Randall Ripley. Uh, I am now a transsexual, and uh, so we we we, became, we got a friendship going. But Randall always got mad at me because I would say he a lot when he wanted to be referred to as she, and I tried to explain to him that the only time I had ever known him he was a guy, and so in my mind he's a he. If I said if I saw you if you were in the same room with me, I think I would then start calling you she. But, you know, my last memory, so please excuse my whatever, my uh, not respecting your newfound sexuality. And uh, he got, she, see, there I go. She got so mad at me that never talked to me again. Well, uh, let me show you a picture of Randall just so you can see who I'm talking about. That's Randall Ripley, broadcaster, as I knew him. Uh, way back when. I have no current pictures of Randall, Randy Steele, the transsexual, but that is uh, Randall Ripley, and he died on Saturday at the age of 63. Just another person gone from my life, you know, so what can I say? Anyway, let me open up the, uh, the lines here. I wanted to tell them, but anyway, I wanted to mention his death because, uh, hey, it was really an important part of my life, and uh, I'm sorry that uh, he got mad at me and that we never talked again, because I would have liked to have gone up to Woodstock or wherever he was living in recent years and, and gone and seen him. But, uh, uh, you know, he did me proud. He started a, a lot of uh, pirate radio stations, and I think the government tried to arrest him once, and it was a big deal out here 
in New York a few years back, if any of you remember. But anyway, there's that. Now, uh, tonight, uh, I'm going to let you do most of the talking because my voice is kind of shot. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's, it's not good, okay? <coughs> See, I, I have to do that, and I'm sorry. But I build up with phlegm. Wouldn't you know, the first one calling is Mike. Who is, hey, how you doing? Who how you just, doing? just joined us here. Let's see here if we can get a picture out of you, Mike, and then we can uh, turn the Skype picture on. There we, there go. we go. It's whirling around. It's whirling around. And there's Mike, ladies and gentlemen. And look, I got the clean shirt on today, and I got my hair cut. I got my hair cut, too. Well, they, should, they cut it off too short. What? No. It never can be too short. It 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 because it'll grow back. I mean, it grows back really, really fast. You know, so it takes and, mine about three months to get real to get to where, know, where it's the disgusting. Long, get long. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Here comes Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I'm gonna let you guys do most of the talking tonight because I am not well. <laughs> yeah. So I heard you. You replayed. Uh, the interview with uh, Ronnie. Well, I solved the problem with uh, Facebook. Uh, and so now when I do my thing on my main page, it tells all these people that the show's on. Where before it went over to the uh, Gabnet Live uh, page, and it didn't tell all those people that I was on. So uh, uh, that's that's what I did. Okay? So. Oh, okay. So you started getting sick over the weekend? Well, I've been I've been having something kind of lingering ever since I was out in Fire Island, and then I, you know, it was like it's like uh, kind of a, a, a something in the here this area, and my throat, and um, uh, I didn't I haven't known what it is. You know, it, I, it certainly can't be cancer because cancer doesn't come on that fast. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but. Uh, it, you know, when I drink some some liquid, sometimes I could feel it a little bit in this area here, and I think it has a lot to do. It's a it's a thing. It's she thinks it's uh, it's basically sinusitis, and uh, that uh, she's given me some stuff to help with it. So we'll see what happens. You know, uh, this stuff doesn't work overnight. In some ways, while I don't feel great right now. I feel better than I felt this morning. Okay, so th that I have to say. But in fact, I was supposed to do a couple of interviews with uh, Larry Brown, and I couldn't do it today because I was. I phoned him up. I said I'm just too sick to even talk to you. You know, so we'll yeah. do it tomorrow. And I rushed down to this place. Thank God for these places. Have you have you ever tried one of them? I have uh, because you can't get your doctor. You know what the thing about those places is? From my insurance company, they charge you like three times the amount that you would pay to go to your own doctor. Really? Well, at least that my insurance company does. It sucks. It's, you know, the, these emergency walk-in clinics where you go and if you feel a little something, yeah. it's like 75 bucks that they charge me for that as opposed to a regular doctor visit, which is like, what, $30 or Do A regular doctor's visit is $30? They're like 200 now. I mean, that the, the copay. Oh, the copay. Well, you yeah. see, I don't have a copay problem because they accept my Medicare and then whatever Medicare pays them, they take. Okay, I've never gotten a, an, another copay bill from them. So. Well, that's cool. So, and if they sent it to me, I would pay them because every time I've gone there, they've solved my problem. Now, this may be the exception. I'm speaking too early, but uh, but it, it it you know I was uh, 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 whatever. So anyway. I, Did you get a chance to uh, see the new Apple um, products today? I wanted to go see them. I I, I was at the, uh, working, you know, with the going to the doctor and everything, uh, and I didn't get to see the co thing. And I had forgotten it was going to be on, so I went over to my uh, t my Apple TV, and they usually have. It's there. It's I not it, well. It wasn't there. Uh, Maybe you went too a, early. A couple of hours afterwards, it, they, you would think they would get it on just immediately, you know. Yeah, I I, I watched it about six o'clock, I think six thirty. I went to I said, oh, that's right, today's the day, and I I went to Apple TV, Apple events, and there it was. And 
uh, from the, uh, the Steve Jobs Theater. Right. Right. But uh, so the, the 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 new iPhone, the new iPhone X yeah. or 10, I guess. Well, they, here's they here's what a, I don't a 10 get. and an eight. Here's what I don't get about Apple. They're charging a thousand dollars for a phone. Not worth. Not worth. Women, it. women. Not only not worth it. I seem to remember when I was still at uh, Sirius, uh, Albert bought a Samsung phone. And you know what he loved about his Samsung phone? To open it up, all he had to do was show it his face, and it would turn it on. You know, it would, it would, that was your password, was your face. Right. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty good. The big deal today with Apple was it recognizes your face. Right. That's, what, five years old, that technology? I think this is a little different than that. How, how is that? It's still, still not worth it. It still uses a password. You know, <clears throat> and then the next thing is they have edge to edge, right? O almost edge to edge. Samsung's had that for what, a year now, two years? Yeah. I mean, it's like there's nothing in that new Apple phone <coughs> that's new and unusual. Well, supposedly that's their MO now is to uh, wait for everybody to do their stuff and then make it better. Then make it better. Yeah, I, like they they put the, all this. Sounds like something Trump would suggest. Rec yeah, recognition stuff that's super finite behind it and all that other stuff that you can't yeah. see. Still, but, I don't. And like they mentioned today that the OLED uh, display that they're using, they hadn't done it before because there were drawbacks to it. Until they could figure out how to get around those drawbacks. Uh, to the OLED display, they were going to stay away from it. But and, other companies have had the OLED display, right? right? Yeah. Right. Oh, right. so they, they, did they, it, say, they did it right. That's their answer. According to them, the, the, yeah. the contrast problems are gone and the, the brightness issues. And the, there are three or four different things that uh, they claim they were able to resolve. I mean, I think I, I wasn't overly, you know... I, if I were to buy a phone, it would be the eight. It certainly wouldn't be the ten. I don't think the ten's worth a thousand bucks. Yeah. Um, and the eight, the only thing different about the eight and the ten is the different display and the uh, the the face recognition. The same processors, everything else is the same in it, and it's that much cheaper. Well, so, you know, Apple has gotten away. But the trouble is, I'm like, you get you find yourself trapped into the Apple ecos culture, yeah. you know, uh, in the, into their ecosystem. And so, like, you know, my messaging system works with all my devices and talks to all my devices and my calendars on all my devices. If I were to give up one link of that, like, say, the phone and buy a Samsung, I would lose all that. You're screwed. It's, well, it's, it's, it's like going, it's like, going, it's like c canceling your cable company and losing your email address. Yeah, and that's yeah. what I, that's, you know, that's something I put into consideration when I went to Apple. I was with a, I was with Windows for a long time and and I finally said, you know what? Either I'm going to jump all in or I'm not going to. And you have you have to do that. I, I guess. went to Apple. I don't think now after running a PC here doing this show that the Apple's that much of an advantage over a PC. It's a, it's a cleaner code. It's a cleaner code. Depends on what you're doing. That particular application I would agree with you on, but I use a I use an a, a Windows machine all day, every day for work, and I can tell you it's still a piece of crap compared to an Apple. Well, an Apple. I agree with you about Skype. Yeah, but I don't short of do you, Skype. Do you edit your videos on a Apple or on a? Uh, uh, well, Apple I, or a, I use uh, it on Windows an Apple machine. because I've been again. I, I have Final Cut Pro, which I've had for years, and no, uh, but I do use Microsoft's. Um, a video program Premiere occasionally, and I have Premiere installed on the on the PC. I just don't do it on the PC, but I imagine it would be fairly robust. You know, if it's yep. the same as it is on the on the Mac. Well, uh, uh, there's this uh, gal I know on Facebook. Uh, she's That's a Phil tech Meyer, writer. by the way, in case you just joined. Hey, us. Yeah. she's a tech writer for uh, the New York Times, and mm -hmm. she posted a thing today. She was at the uh, at the Apple uh, Center. And uh, she was in the uh, same door going through the thing as uh, Wozniak. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So she said, what do you want, at, you know, just putting out a post, what, what do you want from Apple? And, uh, you know, I said, I want a flip phone because I'm tired of pocket dialing people. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've never done that with my Apple phone. No, the, uh -oh. I, I've done it, but I haven't done it when it's in my pocket. I've done it when the face is open and I'm doing things. Yeah. And all of a sudden, uh, sometimes I'll hang up on somebody and then it, I'll accidentally touch the one above him and then I'm butt dialing somebody. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I had a clamshell phone or whatever they call them, flip phone, never had a butt dial. Never, you know. But, was... but wait I got I got something here. Here's something for you. Do you, do you read your mail on your phone or on your tablet? Uh, I read it on the phone. Mm -hmm. uh, you read or, it on the phone. Or on my okay. computer. Okay. Work. How do you delete those letters from your phone? I don't delete anything. I swipe. Swipe them. Swipe yeah. them, or you can swipe go up. edit, and then you can. Da, 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 da. But you got to go yeah, through each of them to get them to de delete. Rather than all, rather than say, why don't you put a thing in there where you can go all delete and then all the things get marked. Wait a minute, and then you go through them and mark the ones you want to keep, not the ones you want to get rid of. What I but what they I haven't like, changed that at all in since the inception of the iPhone. They haven't done I, anything with that program. What I don't like about Apple is I can't close the programs and, you know, have a, and I think it was one of the earlier Windows ones where you could actually click on something and it closed any program that you had open. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you had 20 programs in the background or pages or whatever, you click on this one thing, boom, they're all closed. But uh, with, the, uh, with the Apple, you have to swipe them one at a time. Uh, also, and that's probably what you're talking about with your. Uh, well, I'm uh, talking, email about the, I'm talking about the mail system the, the, that you can't. That the you. Can't. There's, there's no there's no close everything, uh, or uh, you know I mean you turn it off, you turn it back on, they're still there. That's why right. I I very seldom run mail on my phone, because it's easier to get rid of on the tablet, but it's still the same thing. You have to hit every single one, hmm? and let's say you've got a hundred of them. You know. It's, no, it's, I, I, they, 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 all I'm saying is they haven't created a, um, uh, uh, an what interface. It, it, well, well, something, uh, an alternative to deleting files, right? A delete all. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, now, do you, you do you use um, uh, Office on your phone? No, I I don't. I do. Why? I, because I I'm just used to the interface. I have it on. You know, I can drag, drop appointments. Um, I have never, number one, yeah. I have never been able to get any of those Office products to work on my phone. I don't know oh, why. They, I, I get them to work. I just have no, I, I, first of all, I don't like looking at a small screen, but I get them to work. They install them, no problem. I have and I, I use Outlook on my, uh, on my phone. I don't use the, the mail program. I use Outlook on my phone, and it works well. Really I would well. Have, I'd use Outlook except for one big problem with Outlook. Uh, I, you know, I changed, I, I, I changed my ISP. I mean, I'm now have another email address for everybody. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I also decided I'd put everything else to come in on the phone, uh, on the, uh, on Outlook. And one of the things I had coming in on Outlook and I had it before were all my Mac accounts. Okay which is something, something, Mac.com or me.com or iCloud.com. They're all, they all resolve to the same address. Uh, and it worked. And then all of a sudden, one day in Outlook, it didn't work anymore. And it turned out that Apple decided they wanted this two-step verification. And if you don't have two-step verification, you can't get an app verifier to take care of it so it will run on Outlook, and I don't want to go through all that trouble. I don't want to do that fucking two-step verification. I have it off. I use that Rackspace program for uh, for the emails, uh, at least the business ones, and for a buck more a month, uh, they make it work with um, uh, Office. And uh, so if I ever Why have a, a buck problem... more to make it work with Office? It should walk, work with Office anyway. My my. My GabNet account works with Office. Well, yeah, because your GabNet account is you're hosting it, but I'm not hosting Rackspace. Uh, they're they're uh, a separate company that handles my email boxes, so I don't have to put it on my server, because uh, I'm in the midst of getting rid of the server and going strictly to the cloud. 
So well, there's no uh, difference. I got news for you. There's no real difference between the service and uh, server and the cloud. Yeah, I mean, uh, basically, the cloud dollars. is a server. Yeah, it yeah. is. But, it's, but the cloud you don't manage it. Seven thousand dollars. I pay a couple hundred dollars a month, and they take care of everything. They update my stuff. Um, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Whereas, uh, you know, every every time I call my accounting company uh, where there's a problem, they would say, "Oh, you do, you got to do the update." Oh Jesus Christ! Just fix the thing. No, you got to do the update. So then you had to call them back. It was well. All, 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 all I'm saying is, is that that I, uh, boy, excuse me if I'm a little thick here tonight. Um, I uh, don't. Uh, uh, I, I just don't like uh, the fact that Outlook makes me. Well, Apple has made me go to a two-step verification in order to make it resolve itself into Outlook. So I'm using Apple Mail now. Which of course resolves very easily into yeah. Apple Mail. You can get all the Apple Mail you want without two-step verification, but they made yeah, it rough for anybody else who has a third-party program. You can't drag and drop into other Office applications uh, from that. Whereas I get an email and I want that email in in, a, in an appointment, and I can drag it, drop it into the appointment, so I have that whole thing right there. And I and I can put it on whatever well, day no, I, I want. But I, so but I have all my I have all my uh, appointments on the Apple calendar, and I have them here, uh, and I have them uh, in my iPad and, and all you, of that. And I can drag and drop all that shit. Oh, well, okay. Well, I've just been using Office all these years, and uh, uh, you know, I, I just found this one. I'm going to bring it back to the store. This is uh, Office uh, 2010. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was in my uh, it was in my thing, but um, it's an antique. Yeah, really. Well, that uh, those they, they, well, that's an, that's something that Office has done. That Microsoft has done. You can't buy Microsoft Office anymore. Yeah, you have to subscribe to it at a hundred bucks a year. You know, yeah, so, I, unless you're a business. If you're a business, it's a lot more than that. I pay uh, for Word. Uh, through uh, my hosting company, twelve bucks a month uh, per per workstation, and the reason I have to do that is that I have a a, a, a CRM, which is a uh, yeah. contact <clears throat> management software, and and a couple of other things that rely on that, and so I have to get it through Office, but because I'm a business, they charge a much higher rate. Yeah. Well, I remember when I. Uh, 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 started. Uh, hold on a second. I'm just trying to look at something here. Uh, I, 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 when I uh, when when who was it? Adobe mm -hmm. first started this yearly subscription to all their stuff. I like it. Which I spend forty nine ninety five now. I think you spend less because you cheated your way in there. Yeah, I'm spending twenty nine uh, now. I spent twenty nine ninety five for the first year, and then they upped yeah. me to the forty nine ninety five. But in order to get, you see, if I only needed Photoshop, I guess I could get away cheaper. Ten but bucks. I do need the video program. I do need Audition. You know, uh, what do you use, uh, Rob? Do you use Audition? I use the cheap. Free audacity. I yeah. found them to be a pain in the ass. But anyway. Uh, I like it. I, I, I got, especially when I was doing uh, GabNet Rewind, mm -hmm. I was so fast with that thing. Oh, well, yeah. well, good. You know, I just found it, it presented a myriad of problems for me. But anyway, <clears throat> uh, when Microsoft, when Adobe decided to do that, uh, you can only get us by subscription now. I thought that was the worst idea anybody ever came up with, and it turns out now it's the best idea anybody came up with because everybody's using that model now. Yeah. Because every month they get forty nine ninety five from me, and uh, uh, you know they at six hundred bucks a year. In the old days, I would have piracy. Huh? Oh, because Touch one of those piracy. programs, one of those programs could cost you three hundred dollars a year just to upgrade, like uh, Photoshop. Yeah, and sometimes right. Photoshop oh, no, no, used I, to be six hundred. No, I realize that, I and the, but for forty nine ninety five, I get everything Adobe makes. Right. I mean, I don't know that I'm going to use anything more than the three I'm using, but I do use the three I'm using a lot. Yeah. So I pretty much only use Lightroom, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's nice to have the other stuff. You know, one of these days I'll use it. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, though, I, after watching the thing today, I will say that 
I, there wasn't one thing about anything that they showed with all the products from the watch, the iPhones, the different iPhones, and uh, that that I went, wow, I got to have that. I, there's a lot uh, of junk. Well, I'll tell you what I got to have. Oh, jeez. I'll tell you what I got to have. I, I got uh, Well, I got to have the watch. Yeah. I, I have got what? I've been pushing off. I've been pushing off the watch too, and I think I'm at the point where I think I want to get one because it has a cellular. Tech. I love, I love the watch. Okay, hi, 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 Brian. By the way, turn off your mic, Brian, when you're not talking. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Chains are rustling. I bought Faye a watch. Well, wait a minute. Let generation. me finish. Let me finish what I was saying, Phil. Uh, uh, I have the watch, and I love that thing. I mean, it's indispensable to me. I really? get all little headlines. It taps me on the wrist to tell me how much I've walked today. makes me feel guilty. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's a great, it's a product I thought that when I bought it, I would get buyer's remorse, and I haven't had buyer's remorse for a day. Yeah. Uh, and um, now that it's independent, uh, I always have to think, if I got my iPhone with me, because yeah. I, it needs to talk to my iPhone, the new watch for four hundred and thirty dollars, uh, for the size I want, the large size, uh, it is runs independently of your of your does iPhone. Does that mean? Does that mean you need a separate agreement with the carrier? The, yes. Uh, the The price that uh, AT and T is going to be charging is ten dollars more a month. Not having it. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, uh, no. I have, you might I just have, change my mind back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not I, having it. I bought Faye the first generation I, uh, uh, iWatch, and she doesn't wear it. And uh, it's not called an iWatch. It's not called an iWatch. Well, whatever it is, Apple uh, Watch. Apple Watch. And uh, I and um, so I, I told her I said charge the thing up. I'm going to sync it to my phone and see if I like it. And if I like it, then maybe I'll get the newer one. I bought my daughter for her birthday the last one that just came out and uh, sent it down to her. But uh, Phase is the first generation, and it's the smaller one, and the band's a little tight, so I don't now, know how well, long Well, the thing could... is, the, the, the new watch will take calls. You can talk, mm -hmm. you know, take calls, phone calls. This, the first generation does, no, too, it doesn't. Is, once no, you have it oh, within oh, 300 feet. You have yes. to have your iPhone nearby. This is independent right. of your iPhone. You could be downtown. Your iPhone could be uptown. You can still get yeah. calls on your watch. So yeah. this is as close to Dick Tracy as you can get. It's about yeah, uh, and and there pictures, and it 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 is pretty good. Uh, I mean that's a great idea. But the, here's the problem: you want to hear the people on the phone? Well, you can if you ever heard it, you can put it up to your ear and you can kind of hear them. Okay. You can pair it with those Apple. But you can pair it with the Apple uh, hash pipes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, 130 which, bucks a pair. Yeah, <laughs> is that 130 bucks a pair? Is that what they I don't know. I don't know. I, I think I, they're more I, than pretty, that. Pretty expensive. Yeah. They're not comfortable. Those uh, the, yeah. you know, the they don't I, look good. The the free uh, headphones you get with the phone, uh, the uh, from Apple, they look similar, but they have a wire. Uh, for one reason or another, they're very uncomfortable. Oh, they, I never can get them to stick in my head. I got to wet them, lick on them, make them stick yeah. in my ear. Don't right. electrocute yourself. No, I love these things. These are sponge rubber. And uh, yeah. you put them in your ear and they expand. And uh, nice tight seal. This <laughs> is a uh, custom uh, mold. And then uh, sure. Sure. I happen to have the bows, but I could have gotten the Atomotics. Uh, but uh, th this is a, a bows and it's made to fit into this. And then that just fits into my so ear. If you, very ever, if you ever lose that, you just uh, go out and pay another thousand dollars to get it. No, no, no. I, I made them. <laughs> oh. Uh, you know, I made them. Uh, cost me about 45 bucks to have the mold made. Uh, you know, to do, I do the mold and then I send it to a lab and the lab charges me. Uh, to to make the piece. Yeah, but anyway, all I'm saying is I kind of like the the idea that the uh, Apple Watch is independent of the iPhone because all you can get your mail on it, you get a lot of things without having to be anywhere near your iPhone. Right now, all the the uh, Apple watches is, is a reflection of what's going on in your iPhone. But you're yeah. never going to be away from your iPhone, really, if you think about it. Where are you going to go without There are days your phone? I've left without the iPhone and I had the watch yeah. on me. Say I, that again? I, I've had times when I've left and I had the the watch on me, but not the phone. 
I love the phone was calls. Was that a mistake, though? Was that yeah, a mistake? It was a mistake. That, it was a mistake. So yeah. there you go. You're but, not you're not going to unpurpose but, leave your okay. phone home. Okay. The uh, the, I, I, the watch won't work everywhere in the house because I have thick walls and it has to find the signal from the i from the iPhone. Uh, so I can I, go. I, I if I go the other side of the apartment, I lose the signal on the watch. I just got pitched by Verizon at the store. They're going to give me uh, voice over IP phones as many as I want, mm -hmm. uh, and the way it works is if I get a phone call, I answer it on my phone uh, seamlessly. Uh, I can make it uh, look as if the phone number that I'm calling from is the business phone number. Uh, these things work together. It is amazing uh, what these things can do. Am I supposed to understand all this? I mean... It what do you mean? I mean, uh, I, I'm not following you on this. It, oh, uh, so uh, uh, Verizon words, has... Uh, uh, Verizon's found a way to make you cheat, to lie to people. Not necessarily. Let's say I'm in the warehouse and, the, and my extension rings. I can answer it from my iPhone. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and therefore, I could probably answer it from the iWatch or the Apple Watch. I can, uh, do, that. I can do that from my Fios account or phone. Uh, all oh, I have okay. to do is just uh, type in, you know, go into the phone, tell it, uh, hey, call my, call my yeah. iPhone. Well, currently I'm using an AT&T partner system, and, you know, I have a big box in, in, in a closet, and the thing must be 25 years old. And uh, so when I see this new technology, and uh, the bill is less, and, uh, oh, way, yeah. uh, and I can do all these other things by, with it. By the way, I have come up with a thing. The one, one of the, I finally found something wrong with Fios. Mm -hmm. Their installation was the sloppiest installation I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, they've dropped this thing in back of here, which is fine with me that it's nearby. This is the, what do they call it? Uh, Modem? No, Rob. No, the, the, uh, the box? The no, the, the OND or the whatever. The OND, it, yeah. It, it's a thing that's something the, like it. it. What's that? That's the that, that's the thing that went in. It goes into the fiber goes into there, and then the rest of the stuff comes out of that box. Okay, yeah. so it's right here, right? Yeah. Um, but then I look down to where they put it in, and they got it plugged into a plug. I mean, it's it's a sloppy job. They didn't tack down the wire all the way around. You know, it, very sloppy job. I mean, it'll it. I don't think it'll fall apart. And I'm sure that if the FIOS wire ever breaks, they can fix that fiber connection, you know. But, I mean, geez almighty. That's the only thing I found that was wrong, though. Otherwise, well, I love this system. Will it get lost with all the other wires that are down oh, there? Oh, they're, they're lost already. They're looking, yeah. for, they're looking for their way <laughs> so, home. I know what's underneath my desk is a ganglion of wires that I, I you know, if I ever had to trace a wire down, it one would be time, impossible. One time I decided I didn't like all those wires after a while, so I completely took yeah. apart my entire system and put it back together, and once I got it back together, it was another mess of wires down there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I bought those split vacuum cleaner tubes, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, uh, yeah. they're, they're like a, a, a plastic tube. Yeah, I know, and, what, you're yeah. I know, yeah. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, that yeah but work. by the time you get done uh, uh, slinging everything together and putting it in there, then you need to take it apart because you need access to that one wire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Hi, uh, hi, Jeff. How are you? How you doing tonight? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I happened to listen to Ronnie's uh, interview. Yes. Yeah. It was terrific. It was really. Uh, it, it was. I, I felt. I felt it was worth replaying because in viewership, it's gotten. One of the biggest viewerships of anything I've ever done, mainly because on yeah, her site she I, I has did also not mentioned it. Read it before I didn't listen to it before, so uh, yeah. Well, I I ran it because a lot of the people oops. who would normally see online that I was going online weren't able to do that because of the way I had to put the program online last week. But I finally got that problem. What is that? Oh, now, who is that? What is that noise? Wow. Was it was it on Facebook? Because I didn't see you on Facebook this after this evening. No, it's on Facebook. We're running right now on Facebook. <laughs> Facebook. Really? Uh, yeah, Facebook. Um, a Bennett and my own page. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I went to your page and I didn't see it. It's got Friday's show on there. Oh well, you probably you did. You refresh the page. Yeah. You did. Yeah, it's got you know the Randall thing on it. But... Yeah, but uh, right. In, if you refresh the page, do you have it there? I'm looking right now because I turned it off here. Let's see. Refresh the page and you'll see it's there. 
No. What? No video tonight on Facebook, somebody says. No video Frank tonight Sibley. on Facebook? Well. Yeah, I didn't see it on there. That's why I usually All I know it is it's running. Let me see here. Let me do oh. this again. Because I usually get an alert when you go online and yeah, no. that didn't come through tonight. No video tonight on Facebook? Yes, there is. I just rebooted it. Not there on the one I'm looking at. Okay. I see from okay. nine, I see the nine eight, and that's it. Yeah, that's what I was seeing because all, all I caught was the last part of Ronnie's interview really? on line here. It's. I didn't think you're on. It's running. It's running. It's on there. Mm. And uh, uh, let me mm. uh, let me go over to another computer here. So you guys talk to each other. For a second. Hit it with a hammer. <laughs> Man, what a ripoff! No Facebook. Huh. Dang it! <laughs> I have a, I have a, a, a one no no friend no name Facebook page, and if I really want to check out uh, Alex's page, just to see if he's going to be on, and I didn't see him on tonight. That's for sure. Yeah. Now I, I haven't. I, I thought maybe. Well, I, he's. I'm not a friend, so I maybe I don't see it, but. Uh. Um, Mm -hmm. I, tried I think I know in. what the problem is. Alex. I What's think that? I did something wrong in designating uh, that it should be a public thing, and I don't. Oh boy! Well, that screwed up, didn't it? Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up a problem. Uh, let me, let me stop <laughs> streaming it. Let me see if I can uh, get it to come up. Hold on a second. Where? Uh, oh boy. Um, where are my earphones? I had them a second ago. Oh, a little problem I got to fix here. Oh, wow. That that had something to do with the way I, I put it. Let me stop streaming it, okay? Mm. I'm going to stop streaming it. This is going to take a little bit of doing here. Stop streaming. Okay. We're still recording, by the way, so you'll see a full recording later on. Okay, mm -hmm. done. Okay. Now, let me see here. Uh, let me see here. Be, uh, let me go create a live stream. And then uh, I have to, there's something I have to do now that is a problem with the old one. Share on your timeline. Okay, it says public. It should be public. Huh. This is weird. Um, okay, it, it's listed as a public, and um, first of all, I want to do that. Copy. Not showing up on this side. No, I'm not. Haven't done it yet. Haven't done it yet. Uh, Alex Bennett's ramble, and what's the date today? Uh, nine twelve twelve seventeen. Uh, then I take that and I bring that down here. Huh. Copy. Okay. And then paste. Okay. Paste. Okay. Then I do this. Copy. And I just want to make sure here. It says public, right? Okay. It's public. Anyone on or off Facebook? Okay. All right. So I do this. Come on here. Copy. Okay, I go over here. I go paste. Uh, <laughs> paste. Okay, and apply. And I go start streaming. Okay, and it sh hold on a second. I have to then do one more thing to get it streaming and say go live. Okay. And um, it should be, I'll let you know in a second, it should be going, okay? I don't understand why it is, why it wasn't, um, but uh, let me, uh, let me. Yeah, not here. I don't see it. Huh? Not here. I don't see it. Not there, but it's, it's here. Plus the hurricane. And <clears throat> what is that all about? That is very, very strange. That is oh. very strange. Well, 
Then I can do, here, 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 folks. Are you going to stop streaming? God damn it. There's something wrong with Apple. I mean, with uh, Facebook. Facebook. Okay, so let me go here. Let me do this. Let me do that. Okay, let me do that. That was already there. Okay, okay. Copy. Okay, now I'm going to, this is, this is going to be a strange one. Now I'm going to go here and I have to put in the key uh, on the stream. I'm sure this is really exciting for everybody. Paste. Show. Okay. Apply. All right. Okay. And then I go start streaming. There it is. But it's not streaming. See, here, here comes the big trick. <laughs> okay. It's not streaming to my... Um, to my uh, 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 Facebook page, uh, the normal one, it's it's doing it at GabNet Live. Okay, so I go over to GabNet Live, and I see here what I got. Let me see here. We have it. There we go. Share. Uh, say something about this, uh, Alex Bennett's ramble. Uh, See, I had to do this because it's driving me crazy if it's not working. Ramble, and again, yeah, we're doing GapNet Live now. Seven, yeah. Wait a minute, seven, uh, uh, 12 dash 17. Okay, and then I go uh, post to my timeline, right? And it's going to post it, and I think it should be up there. There we I go. I see it on GapNet Live, but uh, let's go back to the other one. Well, here, just um, that should that should work. What it did was it uh, it put a link to where you can see it on Gabnet yeah, Live. I don't want it that way. Oh yeah, that isn't the way it should be. Let me see here. Huh? That's strange. Uh, let me move over to this thing. I don't even thing. see that. I just see the. Hmm? Nine eight and then Randy's post. Yeah, let me see here. Let me let's see here. This is live. Okay. All right, all right. Here we go. Let me see here. Let me get it there. Then let me see post. Share. Share. Uh, to my uh, I'm gonna post it. Oh, from Gabnet Live. I want it. I want to uh, share it on a page I manage. Page I manage. Share to my timeline. Post. Now let's see what happens. There you go. There we go. Okay. Now it's working. See? I'm a scientific genius, but it, you know what is? Uh, uh, it is? At Facebook, it's not working. It only came in on my particular thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, so anyway, oh, hi go. everybody. How are you? Uh, we're here. <laughs> oh man, that was, that is so, that is so ridiculous. Uh, again, this is a problem with Facebook that I've been having. Uh, and, and as sick as I am, I just fixed that, but it, it, uh, it didn't work, which is strange. Uh, so I had some good luck over the weekend. Yeah. My wife is a extreme couponer, extreme, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So she she and she always finds out about all these glitches and weird p things about pricing and stuff. Yeah. So she calls me up on the phone and she says, "Honey, I can get a 55-inch Samsung 4K TV for $299." Yep, right, sure. Okay. Do it. <laughs> But she did. What? She did. I got it sitting over there in the box. I'm not going to open it until I get to the new house. What 299. Size is it? Which what? What'd you say? What size? 55. Wow. How'd 200. You do it? Uh, she's there's this Facebook page that she belongs to, and yeah. it's all about these extreme couponers, and they call them glitches. And so yeah. she went into the store, and she, you know, and then there's this website called Brickseek.com. And uh, you go on there and you saw that 
it, it shows you the inventories that these stores have. And the stores are Target, Walmart, Office Depot. Uh, there's a couple of others. Uh, Target. Um, and, uh, and it said they had five in stock. So she went into the store and they said that they told her they wouldn't give it to her. Yeah. So she called the manager and it says here – the, she she showed him that there are five of them in stock. Did she and purchase it online at the time? No, you couldn't purchase it online. You got to go to the store. I see. So turns out that she did get one. They told her we will only sell you one because they're gonna. They're, this is not illegal. They're gonna. The, the employees are gonna buy them. Right. And they were pissed off that they had to even sell her one, but she mm -hmm. got it. Yeah. So I got it sitting over here in the corner. Samsung UHD TV. Series six series, uh, I <laughs> for two ninety nine. Oh, oh, wow. I love it. <laughs> wow. Well, so today she called me up and we're looking. Uh, oh, it, it, the, a good price on it is five eighty nine. Oh. <laughs> a good price, yeah. So today she calls me up and she says we're looking for you know our new house is going to all be hardwood on the main floor. So she's looking for some sort of a vacuum, whatever, for this. Like Rumba? No, no, no. Something that you're an upright that you push. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you, so she, I've been I've been so happy with the Dyson. Well, she yeah, the Dyson's really <laughs> nice. And this is a this is a a wet, dry thing that she got. It's from Bissell, mm -hmm. and it's two hundred and eighty nine dollars. And again. Wait a minute. She it's, found it's, a glitch. Let me get this. She got it for eighty nine bucks. Let me get this Whoa. straight. Uh, it it uh, it's abyssal, and it's wet, dry, and it sucks. Boy, yeah, it's wet. That's dry, every guy's dream. Sucks. You gotta have that good wet suck. <laughs> yeah, uh, Alex, just be careful with that Dyson on carpet, uh, because it's actually got too much suction for the carpets that are made my today, and it pulls are, the my, fiber out. My of it. carpet is still fine. No yeah. problem. All all, uh, all the uh, carpet manufacturers are saying no Dysons. Really? Yeah. Well, no dice for Dyson. No, for maybe they should make a better food. rug. Yeah, well, they they're making them cheaper and cheaper. <laughs> you know, because I uh, I I, I got to tell you, I've never had any problem with the Dyson on my rugs, except that they're cleaner than they were. Yeah. Well, you have area rugs, right? The Oriental ones or yeah. Persians. Yeah, yeah, well, it's different. Those are woven. Uh, the tufted ones are the problem, just regular carpets. Well, just don't get a tufted carpet. Well, if you get wall-to-wall -wall carpet, 99% of it's tufted. Yeah. But uh, And so they want you to use, and with the, they're, they're coming out with these fibers that are really soft. And they're so soft and they're so fine that the Dyson is pulling them out of the yarn <laughs> bundle. By the way, so everybody, that, that's a good suck. By the way, everybody, go to my Facebook page because we do have video now, so you can yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Uh, because it says only two people are watching it now. I think it's me and Rob. It's probably you and Rob. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't. I closed it, so I don't really use the Facebook, but I just checked it. So wait a minute. Let me turn oh, Marjorie's on to. The thing and make sure it's there. See if it goes <clears> to <throat> three. Now, Rob, you talk about coupons. I saw a lady the other day spent a hundred dollars in groceries using coupon. her coupons, <laughs> and all of a sudden she got the oh, groceries boy. down to That's ten bucks. She gave the guy Who ten knows, bucks for the you groceries. Know, this that Facebook was it. thing has been a real problem. Yeah. Because they keep changing the rules on me about how you do it and how you don't do it, and. Um, if if you hey. were it, what? Oh, well, it, pretty it, soon they'll just start charging for a program that, that that helps you do it, and that's how they'll monetize it. Well, uh, no, I mean it, they 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 have a thing that's called uh, uh, if you go to Facebook dot com forward slash live create, mm -hmm. okay, you should get a page that basically says go live with live stream but the way it's been the last couple of weeks when i've gone create live stream the thing just keeps going around and around and around and i couldn't get it to work so what i did 
Because I went and said, well, what are the other options besides share on your timeline? And it says, share on a time a page you manage. Okay, so I go to that. And of course, it's got a bunch of pages, half of which I don't want, but all the information now with the streaming key and everything comes on. I then take that and move it back to share on your timeline. And it does come up, and it should be ready to go and do a, a video, okay, on my timeline. But apparently it doesn't. <coughs> apparently I get it here on my page, but you don't get it. Uh, could, I'm getting it on your page. No, you're now, getting it now. now because I'm going yeah. through through Gabnet Live to do it. If you go over to Gabnet Live, you got the pic that's the master picture. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm simply sending it, posting it over onto the other one. So it, it, it really, I don't know what their problem is or why all of a sudden uh, it's, uh, it, it's causing a problem. But it is, and it's uh, not a good one. Uh, so you got to replay Ronnie's interview again. I guess so. It, did, yeah. it didn't get on Facebook. Yeah, but anyway, so I... I, I, well, I, I did listen to it, but I did not listen. Did not I did not it. use I the regular watch. way. I yeah. used the right. old approach, so to speak. Right. So. Which I think was gabnet.net. Yeah, let me see. Yeah. So anyway, uh, people, go over there and watch it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I mean, I I thought that tonight it would be great because I'd be able to I'd be able to let everyone. What is now, boy? Oh, that's that's Jeff. I can tell. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yep. I can tell because there's a blue line under your picture. That means there's sound coming off of your off of your thing. Anyway, I just um, I'm getting sick of this whole thing with Facebook. I'll tell you that. I mean, I've had to, uh, apparently I can't do it the way I should be doing it. So who knows what their, what their problem is with Facebook. But why I, was I getting I, it on my Facebook page, but you weren't getting it at all on yours? I thought you had that program that you had been paying 50 bucks a month for all these years, and uh, you could, uh, it would put it on Facebook as well as a number of other things. Yes, but you want the, you want the problem with that one? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I have to do it from this page that I'm using here. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, the program itself almost takes up the whole screen. So in order for me to do it, I'd actually have to have it on another screen. In other words, I can run it off of here. I can't run it off the Mac, but yeah. I can run it off of here. And what I did one night when we did the show, I, there is a program built into it where I can go over to the Mac, take anything on that screen, and run it, okay? But I don't like the way Skype looks on the Mac. You know, it looks terrible. Yeah. So I wouldn't get the same look that people are seeing now of the video. So yeah, but it might work. Huh? <laughs> so it might work. Might work. <laughs> With might, a lot less uh, aggravation. Might work, but uh, uh, and, and no, but I mean, and then I, I can do it on, well, I can do three things at once. I can put it on four things. I can put it on live stream, I can put it on Periscope, I can put it on uh, Facebook, and I could put it on, uh, uh, what, what's the other one? Um, Facebook and um, YouTube. YouTube. You know, but who knows if the if the key that I give for the stream to go over to my page is going to work? I'm going to work on it tomorrow and see if I can get this whole thing to Shelt. to work. But that's uh, it, it's an amazing. Nobody cares about. I think nobody cares about the video. Otherwise, I would have heard about it by now. <laughs> well, there was somebody that made a comment. One Frank person. Foley. One person. But he complains about everything. No, actually, he's 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 very positive about your show. But, I don't think he's but, but a he's complainer. But he's always if there's a if there's a glitch or something like that, he's always mentioning it. You know, he tries to help. I think. Yeah, yeah I don't give a I, shit. So just this me is. when it when it wasn't on because I was listening to the end of Ronnie and your show and said your hat. You took it off and you were saying my, look at the hat or yeah, something yeah. like that, and I couldn't see anything. Right. So by the way, did you uh, did any of you go over to that Facebook page to see what happens when you click on that stream live? Yeah, they all they're working. It, no, but it just goes in circles, right? No. 
Uh, is that what is that on? Uh, what on the cabinet eight? live or the? No, 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 Alex no, no, no. I'm talking about when I told you to go to uh, what was it? Facebook. Yeah. Facebook.com. Dot com forward slash live uh, uh, live and then forward slash create all right and what comes up you get a page that says create live stream right oh. slow on the typing are you Phil I'm using the phone oh well, no I don't use the phone no no I need somebody to use uh, uh, can you do that, Kevin, just to check it out? Yeah. Facebook.com so Facebook forward slash live forward slash create. Right. Yeah, it says go live with your gear, create live stream. Okay, click on create live stream. What Share you on your timeline. Yeah, but what's, what's you happening? You can go live from a page. What's happening? What's happening on the main part of the page? No, as soon as I click, nothing. When I click on it, a pop-up pops up. And it says, uh, choose where you want to post your live stream. Okay, say you want to do it on your, your whatever. Timeline. Oh, wait a minute. Right? That, wait a minute. That's different. Than yeah, what it I, looks different. What, what, do you, what do you get, Kevin? Well, I'm on the create page, but it's asking me to log in and a bunch of crap here. And I'm already logged in. Oh, oh really? It's giving you that pop-up. Yeah. That's what it's doing. Damn. When I get a pop-up. When I get a pop-up, it says, do you want to have sex within 3.2 miles of your home? Uh, <laughs> all, I get, all I get is this field with a circle going around it. I, I, you're getting the pop-up you get if you just, oh, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, can you add something after create? Who, me? Yeah. Um, well, probably not because my video stream isn't working because I'm using oh, okay. my camera for Skype. Okay, Kevin, we're going to, we're going to, uh, this is probably this, be the same thing. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. You, you have, you still have the Facebook uh, live create up there. Yeah. After the word create, put a question mark. And then the word what? step uh, equal landing. Oh, that's what I have. That's what's in my bar. Question mark step equal landing. Yeah, and what and what do you get? And I have there's a there's a graphic on the top and it says go live with your gear. Okay. And then there's a button, a blue button right below that in that picture. There's a picture there and it okay. says create live stream. Okay. Now and what then happens, it says get started. Set up uh, number one. Set up number two. Connect okay, okay, number three. Broadcast. Click, click yeah, on, that's where I'm at. Create. Uh, click on create live stream. Yeah. And there's a pop-up that comes up, a white pop-up that says, see. choose where to post your live stream. You could go to live stream. You can go live to a page, a group, an event, your own timeline, or a friend's timeline. And then there's a drop-down that says, share on your timeline, does, share on a friend's have, timeline. Does it, does, it have, does it have a stream key and things like that? It says, no. this live stream is a 360 video, learn more. Yeah. yeah. And there's a checkbox there. Well, it, it looks a lot like what you get normally get elsewhere. Um, in fact, what I'm using now is exactly that. You know, so eh, who knows? I, they, they, they changed it, huh? So they changed the process. I, I have no idea what they've done. I get an entirely different thing here. Okay, I get a circle going around and around and around. And then if I if I share it, if I go. Share a page you manage, okay. Um, then it, it take, gives me the keys and the server URL and all of that. Then when I go back up and say share page you uh, share uh, on your timeline, it, it come it it brings all that up. It should at that point work for me, but it doesn't. For some reason, people were not able to get the picture. I hope this is all interesting to people out there because the funny part is I was looking to see if we lost anybody and we really didn't. Uh, let me see here. No, well, as a matter uh, of fact, we didn't lose a single person. <laughs> Thursday and Friday are fill-free uh, days 
And uh, what? What days are Phil? Thursday free? and Friday. You, it'll be a fill free days. Good because Again? the fill free day the other day was terrific. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm giving you. I'm giving you more. Why? What? What are you doing now? I'm um, shooting a wedding, and they're putting me up at the Mark Hopkins uh, to uh, to shoot this wedding. And uh, nice. so it's uh, the wedding's Friday, but I they want me there on Thursday night. Is it a paid uh, engagement? Uh, sort of, yeah. Uh, it's a friend of mine. It, it's, uh, uh, but he wants me to shoot his wedding, so uh, he's put me up at the Mark Hopkins Thursday and fr- uh, Thursday night, Friday, and check out Saturday. Hmm. So why can't you go live from the Mark Hopkins? I'll be doing stuff. Oh, you yeah. know, really? Yeah. That late? Uh, yeah, well, I'm, uh, you know, there's a lot of shots I want to get. There's, uh, you know, the Herzl portrait dinners shots. And stuff. Both, yeah, uh, the dinners and the, everything that goes on. The next morning is the getting dressed with the dress. And uh, how much did how much, how much, how much you figure this guy's spending on his wedding? Uh, I don't know. It's only 30 people at the mark, and uh, uh, I think about uh, uh, there's only a couple of people. He's getting married at City Hall. In San Francisco, so uh, it's just me, a videographer, uh, his sister, uh, bride and groom in the city hall thing. And there's a bunch of people will be outside. Yeah. And uh, city hall presents some good photo opportunities too. Those stairs and the rotunda and all of that. So it'll be nice. Oh, okay. Well, good. That's uh, terrific. Yeah. Well, uh, that's we'll, what he wanted as a wedding present. We'll, now we'll, we'll just do a we'll super do. nice thing. Uh, you know, make a book for him, some por- uh, portraits and. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, have a good time, and we'll uh, we'll try and get along without you. I'm sure you will. <laughs> um, so, anything happening in the news? I'm so sick and are you all sick and tired of all? Oh, let me turn my mic on a little bit more. Do I sound hoarse tonight? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so, who were you yelling at? What? No, I wasn't yelling at anybody. Sick. <laughs> I've just got that whatever this thing is. Mm-hmm. You know. So I may not be here after Thursday and Friday. You know, you, you better say goodbye to me forever. <laughs> well, uh, so you like that Pat Robertson thing that I texted you? Yeah, yeah. Pat Robertson, uh, what, is blaming the hurricanes uh, on Burning Man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it was such a good picture. <laughs> I'll see if I can find that video tomorrow of him. Yeah. It's got to, it's, well, let me look now. Wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm about one. Well, just go to my messenger thing with you. Well, no, that, that, that just had a story. That was just oh. a story. Uh, let me see here. Um, YouTube, okay. And then we go Pat Robertson. Robertson. Isn't it amazing how people take a guy like that seriously? That's crazy. It's like, it's like cartoon stuff. It's just like you take, you know, you read a cartoon and you believe it's the news. <laughs> Man. You mean wrestling isn't real? <laughs> yeah. Let me see here. Oh, let's see here. Likes manly men. No, doesn't doesn't have, uh, yeah, doesn't have Pat Robertson doing it. Uh, you would think somebody would have put it up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Son of a bitch. Oh. Uh, let me see here. Here comes uh, Brian again. Did we lose Brian earlier? Yeah, I guess we did. He he's got probably, done driving. Where probably we in the house. Yeah, he's probably at home now eating something. Let's guess what. Let's guess what he's What's eating. Brian, what, eating now? Brian, what are you eating? Brian no can't hear. I don't think he can hear us yet. Unmute himself. Brian. Brian. Got a haircut. Yeah. So do we all. I guess it was haircut time for all of us. I'm getting one in the morning. Are you really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. A wedding. I used to go yeah, to the same exactly. place to get a haircut for like 40 years. And they went out of business. Well, my Doesn't friend, that suck? I, yeah, I, I've been going to the same guy all these years. And he died. And the gal that he trained and sold his uh, thing to uh, a few months before he got... Uh, liver cancer uh, uh, has been cutting my hair and she's great. Yeah. She was 
trained in the, the, the French way. She uses the razor and the scissors and uh, you know, really makes it look fuller for the, uh, the few follicles that I have. <laughs> well, anyway. Um, so anyway, I, you know, first of all, the idiots that were hanging out down in Miami, it, like all the news people, all the weather people, there was this guy, he was on Good Morning America. He was their weatherman for years. His name was Sam Champion. Yes. And they fired him. And you never heard of Sam Champion again for a while. Until last week. MSNBC <laughs> sent him down there to stay there while the storm was on, out in the middle of it. <laughs> Do they tether him down to Are a they, pole or something? I, all, I'm, all I'm saying is that when you got a mayor of a city saying, everybody leave town. Nobody stay here. These guys are there getting in the way. Uh, they have to get a shot in their waders in the middle of the water. That's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. Gotta, e either I that gotta, or in the wind, in the wind going up against it, because Geraldo did that, and everybody's yeah. got to use Geraldo as their model. Now, what is that? Is Geraldo still doing that's that? That's not me. That's not I him. That was Brian. Brian. I could tell by the look on Brian's face it was yeah. Brian. Yep, yep exactly. <laughs> I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> can you hear us, Brian? He's not hearing yeah. us. It's <laughs> weird. Oh. You know, I'll, I'll make him hear us. You know, he looks like a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that haircut? Yeah, that is a white supremacist haircut. He didn't say anything, so he, he hasn't heard us. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, anyway, so, uh, yeah. uh, no, but I, I just, you know, it was so embarrassing. Just so embarrassing. I mean, what does Lester Holt think he's accomplishing by being in Miami? Oh, is he going to make, is he going to make the hurricane, is he going to make the hurricane go away? Well, Lester it's, Holt, it's not just them. They're all doing it, and they're all whoring it. Like, yeah. and uh, you know, it makes you, it makes you kind of think longingly back to the days of Trump. Yeah, you know, it's like bring Trump back, man. <laughs> so it must have been a slow news day because I was watching them as NBC. At least I had it on the background. I was doing stuff today, and they did nothing but trash him all fucking day. Trash. I mean, they brought up Trump? stuff oh, from the Trump. campaign and all kinds of shit. No, they but, had nothing but, else to talk but about. But here, here. they didn't have anybody in waders in the in the water right. down in Miami. Well, they pulled him out. In called, waders. I think it's part of that. I, I think part of that is because of the book, Hillary's book. That tomorrow night's the big interview with oh, that's Hillary. Hillary that's on uh, CNN, eight o'clock tomorrow night. Well, she was already on uh, CBS Sunday Morning. Well, she's doing like a one-on-one -on -one with Anderson Cooper, I think, tomorrow night. Yeah, well, should she? With NBC, too, I think. I wish somebody would just say to her, her, why were you such a bad candidate? I wonder if anybody has the guts to say that. <clears throat> really? Worthless. Worthless as tits on a boar. Or tits on a suitcase. <laughs> no, there we go. Brian, 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 what was happening with your sound? You couldn't hear us? No, I couldn't. Uh, I just had to adjust the. Uh, I just had to. Yeah, well, uh, then you missed uh, select the correct sound um, device so, well, what, on the uh, menu. Uh, on then Skype. you missed uh, Phil. Phil, Phil with was there, was it? What, but uh, you, you missed Phil with the comment of the night that you with that new haircut you look like a white supremacist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say you got to watch the replay and listen for it. <laughs> <laughs> I could infiltrate. I could infiltrate the cocksuckers then, huh? Yeah, so you there you go. <laughs> I knew he'd have a comeback. You could, and they'd think of you as a pal. Yeah. yeah. You know. But Hello, anyway, I mean, it's just, and then, okay, so the hurricane didn't become the horrible thing they thought it was going to become. It's but anyway, bad. no, wait a minute. In the Keys, the Florida Keys, okay? But, but and, Miami, and did, Miami didn't get it hard, okay? Uh, so. They're they're doing everything they can to take all the. They say and in Puerto Rico. I mean, they're they're going that yeah. far with it, True. right? Went to Cuba too, you know. True. And yeah. the, two of those cranes went down in Miami Beach, yeah. down in South Beach. Uh, yeah. out of the if it was going to be what they thought it was going to be, they would have all toppled. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Now, now, what I'm what I'm saying is, it never became what they thought it was going to become. Okay. Yeah, my sister, my, my sister lives in Jacksonville. Neither did I. Her street flooded. 
uh, Jacksonville got a, uh, the other part of town. She's five miles from the beach, but uh, near nearer the beach, uh, it is. It's it looked like uh, Hurricane Harvey. Yeah, uh, surge, though, didn't they? Get more yeah, it's all, it was all surge. Yeah. All I'm saying is that to this day, you tune it on, and there they are again with people in in. Yep. You know, I yeah. mean, Houston got leveled. Okay, yeah. there's yeah. no question about what happened in Houston. Uh, they got leveled. And um, that was terrible. It, it, and they were trying to, I think there was a kind of hope on the part of the news people uh, that this was going to be another Harvey and they would have another, you know, slam dunk story. And yeah. that it didn't become exactly what they expected it would be. So now they're ginning it up to kind of make it seem dramatic. Do you think that it wasn't what they said it would be because the Listen, uh, pe uh, the mayor hey, and the governor hey, 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 did you're, their job? You, you're, you're talking to a guy, Phil, who wanted to see Miami 10, 20 feet underwater. Okay? Yeah. You know, when it I hate in Miami, that fucking town. I hate that fucking town. I, I went to college in Miami, and when it, when it rains in Miami, it's, it's up to your uh, knees just to get through the parking lot and with a normal rain. And, you know, then 20 minutes later, all the water's gone. Uh, well, he's got uh, Hillary's book on the, on the thing. Yeah, I got, I, there's a punchline to this, and I want to, now that I got your attention. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, Hillary's, Hillary Rodden Clinton. This is, this is the book you didn't see on bookshelves. It's called How My Unwavering Class Solidarity with the Bourgeoisie and Unrelenting Commitment to the Illusion of a Post-Ideological World Wherein Competent Managers Oversee Minor Tweaks to a System They View as Mostly Functional Caused Me to Slam My Dick into a Car Door Over and Over Again, <laughs> Losing an Election for the Least Popular Presidential Candidate in American History. <laughs> Uh, did you I, just? I, did I you make that? Did you make that up? Bernie Grow and proud. Sounds like a Dennis Miller joke. <laughs> did, did you write That's that? True. Did you write it, Brian? No, no. This was uh, this was a meme. I this was a meme I uh, found on Facebook, and I couldn't agree more. Yeah. I hope Amy is listening. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 well, you can go on the next show after us and let her and and have her wrath. <laughs> I just laugh at her face. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, look, you know, I think, bottom line, Hillary let us all down. You know, and uh, uh, and she should kill herself. Yes, <laughs> yes. Do it live on air. Yeah, Get I mean, you want to talk she, about radio? She, I, I saw her on CBS Sunday morning. She was talking about how depressed she was when she lost. And how, she, you know, it was weeks of walking in the woods and, you know, staying away from everybody and how terrible she felt. And I'm yelling at the screen, you deserve to feel horrible. But she bought her neighbor's house and it's already tripled in value. Yeah, but, the, <laughs> but they, bought the, they bought it for the Secret Service that they thought was right. coming to stay. Yeah, but now Hillary's probably staying there, and and she's got that's her the worst uh, bill estate, in the other one. That's the worst real estate decision since Frank Sinatra built an extra house on his property for the Secret Service because Kennedy was going to come to stay, and then right. Jack decided not to. <laughs> you know, so it's the same story. Uh, but I just, you know, what a what a situation. I mean, what's uh, the purpose of this book? Though she wrote her own book. Yeah, what's the purpose of this book, really? In the end, it's oh, not for the sure. money. For that house. It's a feel good. No, you want uh, feel good. She doesn't want to go away. You know, she wants to keep her presence. Uh, I don't think she's going to run for anything else. Well, you That's know, what she, she, I wish she'd come to New York and run against De Blasio, because we could you, sure you don't use like a, De Blasio. We could use a de decent mayor in this town. I told you that he was a bum. You know? Yeah, but you told me he was a bum before he had a chance to be one. That's because I knew he was a bum. Uh. Spoken like a pure Brooklyner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's a bum. I was born that, there. He's a bum. <laughs> that man's a bum. Well, <laughs> as I would say, just a sack of horse shit. Yeah. Or pig shit. Well, or you know, the thing shit. is, we got, you know, de Blasio's a pretty bad mayor. He's a lousy mayor. But he's not going to lose this election. Because nobody is running against him that can win. You could run run that Anthony Weiner against him and he'd win. <laughs> Listen, Anthony Weiner. If, if, if Anthony Weiner, if Anthony Weiner could keep his dick in his pants, 
He'd be yeah. mayor of the city right now. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> he probably Absolutely. would have done a good job. I agree. Listen, yeah. I think. And then you talk. You talk about pity parties. Yeah, he's he's another one. Oh, I showed my dick on Twitter. Oh, Actually, you. didn't show his dick. It was just the. And bull. I know, I saw look, an old look, YouTube look, video look. of you and Christine. Uh, you 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 uh, uh, specifically ripping on you Howard know, Stern. It, let me let me put it this way. Anthony Weiner never showed his dick to anybody that didn't want to see it. Okay? Uh, but Trump talked about touching women's pussies who wouldn't have wanted it. Uh, well, th th there's a major true. difference. Showing it's two different things. Also, but Anthony, grabbing pussies. Anthony Weiner is a man beset by demons. Okay? Demons that he can't control. Now, when somebody is sick, don't we feel sorry for them? I feel no. sorry. I was I, I watched that film about Anthony Weiner and I felt sorry for him. I so did too. I he watched. can't you control know? his did personal you feel demons. The, How the fuck is he going to control well, the finances and the security of uh, I say, think the two New York not, City I, Brian, or uh, Brian, any other district? I don't think the two have, have anything to do with each other. Yeah, huh? uh, he don't was, have anything to do with no, each other. No, he was a competent no. uh, uh, a competent administrator. Yeah, uh, but, but Rob, did you feel sorry for him when you saw that film? I did, I did. Yeah, uh, because you saw like, a guy who didn't have control. Yeah, he's a, it's a sickness. It's like gambling or it's like, you know, drinking or whatever. It's a sexual addiction of some kind, a, a perversion that uh, he's, he's addicted to. Yeah. I like when that guy ripped into him at the bagel shop. Uh, and uh, do you remember that uh, segment? I re vaguely recall that. Yeah. Or yeah. there was something where I let him have it. a guy was saying, you know, you can't, you're talking about, you're touting women's rights and shit like that, and you can't forget that. There was, a, there was like a while ago yeah. when this happened. I mean, if I'm thinking of the same thing. Yeah. But I mean, he was married. It's all right. If you're single and you're <laughs> fooling around with women who it's consensual and you want to do that kind of thing, I mean, it's not good that you're doing it. You're in public <laughs> office. But, I mean, he's married, and he was... Oh, if he were single, yeah, I wouldn't give a shit. Well, maybe Uma is a uh, pain in the ass. Probably she's is. not giving it up. And it take, I'm also a believer that as much as it takes two, two, two to make a thing go right, it takes two to make a thing go wrong, too. So, you're probably right there, Phil. I think two very motivated people who are very rarely home and probably spend zero time together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah. What, That's their no, problem on mine. And the kid is the one that probably suffers. Yeah, uh, it, the most egregious uh, party. Yeah, it, the most aggrieved party. <coughs> yeah. well, it, you know, I, I, as I say, I, I always felt somewhat sorry for him because I just saw a guy who had no control over this one demon in his life. Barring that demon, this guy was a pretty righteous politician. You yeah. know, I yeah. mean, he's a guy that was telling all those congressmen and senators off. You know, in 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 Congress. And, and making a big deal and, and, and uh, being outraged. And a lot of people really like that about him. You, you remember, Rob, how he was a I hero love, for I a while. Was he was a lot yeah. like Giuliani in the way he went after the bad guys. And uh, No, he wasn't anything like Giuliani. He was well, honest. He was honest. Well, yeah, the one thing you can't Giuliani. say about, about Wiener is that he was dishonest. Okay. I can no, say about perfect. Giuliani that he's a fucking crook and was and still is. Uh, he I looks like, like the Crip Keeper. You Giuliani. like him, but you don't know him. You don't know about I've him. I met him twice. Huh? I met him oh, twice. Wait a minute. Talked to him I twice. don't know why Renee is calling at the last minute, but she's well, probably going to ream us out for something. Right, Renee? He likes the book. Um, so, number one... <clears throat> This is this is a huge white privilege issue. If you are any other color other than white, having a a sexual uncontrollable sexual problem is would be a luxury. Everybody else would be in prison, but the white guy gets to gets to go to sex reform camp. So that's kind of the first thing about that. And then well, I, I think I what, what about Bill Cosby and some of these other other things that uh, you know? I, I don't think it's a white privilege thing. I think that's kind of uh, bullshit. The money thing. Grabbed the women. money thing. It's power. It's a power and, thing. No, and I mean, sorry, Bill Cosby drugged women. Anthony Weiner didn't drug anybody. Well, let me let me inform you. Let me let me inform you of something, Renee, and then we have to go. Oddly enough. 
uh, uh, Bill Cosby has been accused. Thank you. Don't say that he did. You don't know. Right. You weren't there. He, right. he and then, he's only uh, been uh, accused. You, right, accused, allegedly accused. Got yeah, it. Alleged. And for all of you Uma haters, the woman was pregnant. Why he did so? Well, and look, I, look, I, you know, I, I yeah, but best... you have to admit that both of them are high power people who probably spent very little time together. I'll tell you They're something. Off doing I'll, their things, I'll, and I'll tell you something. If you get a chance to watch that film, just look at Uma's face while he's talking about things. And oh, yeah. in this film, oh, it comes yeah. out that they found another situation, and oh. she's giving him looks like I'm not here very long. I'm having this baby, and then I'm out of here. Yep. You know. Oh, big time. Anyway, well, hey, should... we, we've run out of time. There's a show that comes on after this one. Uh, thank you for all uh, helping to solve my uh, technical problems. And, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> you know, tomorrow night I'm just going to go with the way I've been doing it lately and get it on Facebook without any problem. If I'm still uh, alive well, by tomorrow. Uh, thank you, uh, Rob. Uh, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Renee, for your last minute call. Uh, th thank you, Mike. Thank you, Phil. And uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, what I would uh, suggest is that every single one of you wave goodbye. All right? There you go. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our... Uh, oops, there you hear. They all hang up on me immediately. They, 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 don't, they don't even wait. Okay? Anyway, let me, uh, let me get out of this here. Uh, and we're, I think we're hung up. Yeah, on all these people. We're hung up? Oh, yeah, we're hung up. Okay. Uh, oh, that's my cup of coffee. I'm in bad, as you know, I'm in bad shape tonight. But uh, I'm sure the next show after me will be in better shape than I am. Uh, I'll see you again tomorrow if I'm still alive. In the meantime, as always, see her. Tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>